Okay, so it looks like all the markets are down, at least as of yesterday, but by the time I'm actually getting around to making this video, the markets, well, a lot of them are actually green, including a lot of the crypto market and XRP. Now, if you were able to take advantage of the most recent, oh, about five to six cent increase, well, that's a heck of a job at timing the market. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what some of these markets are doing with the rest of the crypto and Bitcoin market are doing when it looks like some of the resistance and support levels have absolutely given way. But what the one most important factor is in Bitcoin holding this support, because there are some people, namely Kathy Wood of ARK Invest, who's predicting big things for the crypto segment. I'm gonna tell you what she just said about what's gonna to happen to the crypto market not only in the next couple of months, but for the next couple of years and until 2030, because I'm telling you, you gotta hear these predictions. And she is taking some advice from Warren Buffett no, not on crypto, but on the sentiment of the market. So I'm gonna tell you what she just said. Also, there is some more big news coming out for XRP. No, not just Ripple, like I usually talk about. This one specifically revolves around yet another use case for XRP. This one coming straight from Japan, and it involves an auto exporter. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. Right now on this channel, we are of course covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, but I'm also covering other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the late night grind community. Also, if you would do three things, I'd really appreciate it. Number one, smash the thumbs up button, watch this video all the way to the end, and check out my Patreon link in the description below. All right, guys, let's jump into it. All right, so let's talk about some of these markets because as of the end of the day yesterday, everything was red. There was blood in the streets everywhere, not just in the U.S., but in many other markets as well. So I'm just going to so I'm just going to run down a list of some of the losses that some of the major markets, at least in the U.S., took. The Dow was down over 2%. The S&P was down 3.2%. The Nasdaq was down 3.6%. The dollar was slightly down. Even gold was down 1.6%. And by the way, continues to fall. Bitcoin was down 7.7%. And actually by the end of the day, had a total of about an 8.5% decrease. Now, the rest of the crypto market as a whole was 8.6%. Many of the altcoins got absolutely hammered. Some I saw were down anywhere from 5% to as much as 25%. Now, everybody says crypto and altcoins are extremely volatile, but you know what? So are half the stuff on NASDAQ anymore. Uh, Ethereum was also down 8.3%. Uh, XRP was down 10.7%. It fell to 48 cents. Tesla was down at 9%. And one of the biggest Bitcoin maxis out there, Michael, Michael Saylor's micro strategy their stock fell 25%. Now, as I'm looking at it this morning, it is up about 5%, as are a lot of the things that I just mentioned. Uh, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the S&P, they're all, they all had some losses this morning, but they've all recouped the majority of them. In fact, Bitcoin is up about 6%, it was up about 8%. It's, down, it's up about 6% comparatively to yesterday. A lot of the altcoin market are up just about the same amount. So the market sentiment right now is basically all complete fear. If you watch any of the mainstream news, any of the mainstream media, it's all about the markets and what's happening and the crashes and why is everything going down? It's not just the commodities, not just stocks, but Bitcoin and even gold are all tanking. Well, at least as of last night. And as of right now, gold continues to fall, but Bitcoin seems to have recovered some because when you have major, major drawbacks in the markets, in almost any market like that, you're going to have the next day, you're going to have at least some green. Well, today, everything, almost everything is green. And as I speak right now, XRP is up almost 8%, recouping the majority of its losses from yesterday, though not all of it yet. So it looks like there's bad news and there's blood in the streets, there's fear in the market everywhere. So what does Kathy Wood of ARK Invest have to say about it? Well, she is taking the contrarian approach. She's doing what Warren Buffett made famous years ago when he said, you need to be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Well, Kathy Wood is absolutely being bullish, greedy, whatever you want to call it, when everybody else is scared to death. Why? Well, because she say, well, because she says fintech, AI, and the crypto market are on the, ver are on the verge of explosion. Her prediction is that within the next two years, those markets are going to make up a $10 trillion market cap, and by the year 2030, it's going to be worth $230 trillion. She said, don't just believe me, believe our research. Well, ARK Invest is down big. In fact, they're down nearly 50%. A large in part has to do with what uh, with their investments into the crypto markets and how much Bitcoin has actually pulled back. Now, Kathy Wood does have a knack for uh, picking out and predicting what some of these what some of these uh, risk on assets or risk on industries or going to do in the future. Now, obviously it's not gonna be a win all the time or up only, but she's done an amazing job picking it out so far. So taking a contrarian view than what the TV and the rest of the talking heads are talking about, that might not be such a bad idea. 
A lot of people are talking about now is actually the localized bottom or the bottom for Bitcoin, which typically signals what it, what the rest of the market's gonna do as well. So Bitcoin yesterday fell to a local low of $29,711, at least on the exchange that I checked. Well, it didn't even match the lows from last year, which was 28,800. But if you're looking at it a chart, it basically looks parallel. So this is the major support that Bitcoin has to hold. Now, if you're people like, now if you're somebody like Peter Schiff who said if it drops below 30K, it's all gonna crash down to 12K, and, it, and if it crashes to 12K, it's going to 8K and lower. Doesn't look like it's going to do that, but nonetheless, that's what some of the charts indicate based on how much people paid for their Bitcoin years ago. So are we looking at a major capitulation for Bitcoin and for the rest of the crypto market? There's almost no point in talking about some of these altcoins because there's not a lot, because there's not a lot of good news, especially if you look at the stablecoin market and USDT, which is Terra Luna's stablecoin, which lost its peg yesterday, which is supposed to stay at around a dollar, fell to 60 cents, albeit very temporarily, and I believe it's down, uh, I believe it's up to now about 94 cents, but a stable coin is supposed to be stable. That was actually the scarier part of what happened, not the price of Bitcoin pulling back 10%. That happens all the time. So the story of UST and the fact that it bought billions of dollars of Bitcoin to hold its stable coin as a reserve to the US dollar, the fact that it basically fell apart is the story. Now, now Bill Collins is actually one of the founders of uh, the Terra Luna stablecoin. He said there's a he said there is a contingency recovering plan coming out on Twitter. I can't wait to see that. Now, to be fair, he did say last night that it will take a little bit to regain the peg to a dollar once again, but it will happen. Well, the fact that it went from 60 cents yesterday and it's back up above 90, I believe 94 cents that's a good sign, but it's definitely something that I'm keeping an eye on. So I do want to talk about XRP, of course, our favorite altcoin, and maybe not be an altcoin in a few years, because there's some big news that just came out of Japan that is great for XRP. Now, a lot of times I talk about news internationally that's great for Ripple, the company, because of their banking networks that they're putting together, and the use case that XRP is used for transacting money and value around the world very seamlessly, quickly, very cheaply, and Ripple is spearheading that. Well, this one has nothing to do with Ripple. This comes from SBI Motors Japan. Now, what is SBI Motors? Well, SBI is one of the largest financial services firms in Japan. They're very pro XRP because I've, me I've mentioned them several times in my videos over the past six months or so, uh, using XRP in various forms and fashions, and even the executives of SBI talking about the XRP ledger and its amazing use cases. Well, SBI Motors, which is a division of SBI, is finally putting that to work. Okay, so SBI Motors, their market is a foreign car buyer's market. So what they call up and coming countries or developing countries, developing nations, they sell cars to from Japan and will ship and will ship to those countries. They sell about 5,000 cars per year and they're looking to expand that dramatically. So what are they doing with XRP? Well, they are now officially accepting XRP and supposedly Bitcoin as payment for cars. Why? Because of the unbanked. They specifically mentioned Africa. Africa has 1.7 billion unbanked people, at least that was a 2018 number, I believe. And a large majority of them actually do have access to mobile banking, meaning mobile crypto banking. So what SBI Motors is hoping to do is tap into an extremely large potential, potentially car buying market and paid for using cryptocurrencies. Because these people, they don't have to go through the typical banking system, wait weeks for payment and potentially not have it come through. And of course, we all know the major expense that it takes for banks to send money around the world. So by SBI Motors accepting XRP and Bitcoin, they're looking at extremely fast settlements and tapping into markets from the unbanked. The billions of people that are unbanked are now potential car buyers for SBI Motors Japan. That is a great use case for XRP and it's one that I'm extremely excited in talking about because it doesn't involve Ripple. Now it's use cases like this, of course, with everything that Ripple is doing, that is going to make the price of XRP more valuable in the future. When other countries see this, when other countries see this experiment and see that it works and you know what, that is a great idea. Why don't we do that? Because we can reach the unbanked too. Well, something like XRP is gonna be one of the first cryptocurrencies they're gonna use. Why? Because it's one of the fastest it's one of the fastest to settle. It is one of the absolute cheapest 
to transact in all of cryptocurrency. So if you hold XRP, that's very good news for you. That and of course all the due diligence that SBI Motors has done has seen that cryptocurrency holders are essentially increasing exponentially over the past couple of years. So it's definitely a market they wanted to go after. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end for smashing that thumbs up button. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.